Hello, thanks for joining the session. This talk describes a system to quantify, communicate and confirm rates of coastal change in the New Vianowitz settlement region of the Canadian Western Arctic. I'm Nick Olchin, presenting on behalf of the New Vianowitz Regional Corporation, or IRC, the Arctic Institute of North America, based at the University of Calgary, and the development team of the New Vianowitz settlement region's coastal change assessment system. There are clear signs that rates of coastal change throughout the Canadian Western Arctic are accelerating, driven by factors such as a more ice-free ocean, stronger and more frequent storms, and permafrost decay in the weakly lithified sediments which form the region's coastlines. This presents new risks to communities, infrastructure and culturally important sites, almost all of which are located along the coast. The IRC therefore proposed this initiative as part of the Canadian Consortium for Arctic Data Interoperability with the goals of locating and quantifying rates of coastal change throughout the New Vialowitz Settlement Region, or ISR, identifying centres of habitation, infrastructure and important sites of other forms at risk from such changes to inform planning for mitigation, remediation or adaptation, to generate culturally appropriate visualisations through which to communicate these findings to ISR communities and to establish routes by which those with personal knowledge of coastal and landscape change may contribute new information to the system. For example, here in Sax Harbour, there appears to be evidence between these images taken in 2010 and 2017 of coastal change, both erosional and accretionary. The need is to understand more about the associated spatial scopes of these changes and the rates at which they are occurring. The core software chosen to identify and quantify coastal change is the USGS Digital Shoreline Analysis System, or DSAS. This toolset is used widely throughout North America and elsewhere. It's readily accessible, functionally and technically mature, and meets the ISE's needs well. DSAS depends on inputs of a vector spatial layer containing a series of delineated historical shorelines and another defining a baseline. Its outputs comprise transects drawn at regular intervals between the baseline and shorelines, along which directions and rates of change are estimated and stored as attributes. The second output layer contains points marking intersections between the transects and the historical shorelines. So from these outputs, we can see that the uh, visual evidence seen in the previous two images is borne out. If we run through the workflow, the process begins with sourcing or creating a set of historical and present shorelines representing the period of interest. This currently depends on expert knowledge. We hope it will be possible to automate the process. To this end, we are currently looking at porting the COSAT software developed by Killian Moss at the University of New South Wales into the Polotech thematic exploitation platform. DSAS is implemented as an ArcGIS extension. It currently requires that the input spatial layers are stored in the Esri Plus and Geodatabase format. The output layers generated by the system are also stored in this structure. It's important also to store details of runtime parameters and other metadata describing each run. This is currently done manually, but we intend to automate the process. The RSC is then able to visualize the results in ArcGIS for what we can think of as scientific and operational applications. This also enables details of important cultural and archaeological sites, which are not generally made publicly available, to be viewed in the context of the coastal change assessments. The raw spatial results then provide a foundation from which to generate culturally appropriate visualizations potentially in hard copy as posters or perhaps 3D models for the communication with OSR communities. Spatial layers will also be published from ArcGIS Server as a WFS geodata service with the supporting metadata published over the web. The possibility arises here that the modeled results may differ from events observed from the land itself. We therefore hope to extend the system so that it includes a means through which information of this nature may be contributed. For this, we envisage abstracting from the raw DSAS outputs key details of locations, directions, and rates of coastal change, and feeding these into a separate repository built to represent a more generic concept of geomorphological change, potentially extending to other landscape contexts. This would then enable details of these events to be provided from external sources, including from ISR community members with direct observational experience therefore augmenting the overall understanding of locations and rates of landscape change in these dynamic environments. To close, I'd like to emphasize this project is very much a team effort, involving numerous partners within the much larger initiative of CICADI, a multi-year, multi-institution project funded by the Canada Foundation for Innovation. Thank you very much. <laughs>